Okay, here's my uh, Harbor Freight Pittsburgh Tools. Uh, that's your 8 millimeter Allen wrench right there. Okay. And if you look underneath the front, you got this set of two and this larger hole right here. And right there, that's your drain. Hard to get a tool in there while I'm holding the camera. Or holding the, yeah, holding the camera. It's probably going to be a tight son of a gun. Okay, we got it. Okay, taking the tool away. I do have a drain pan, as you see. Okay, and there's our fluid coming in. It's dirtier than I thought with 20 hours on it. Okay, and this is a magnetic drain plug. Let's come out here in the light. Okay. Let me see here. Do the do. Come over here, grab a rag. So everything's hard to do when you're one-handed. So first, yeah, there's a uh, there's a good bit of uh, smooth, fluffy stuff there. So no no chunks. Should be pretty clear video there. No chunks, just uh, normal break-in material. Not a big deal. Nothing to be interested in. Okay, so the O-ring is there. And the O-ring is not damaged. We'll give it a, another wipe down before we put it back in. So all you do is let it drain. And as we were wiping this off, it has just about stopped. You can see a wee little stream there. Um, we'll let that go a couple minutes and let it drain down. And I'll get set up for refilling from the top. I, I'll probably go ahead and uh, install this um, before I come back to the video. I'll get this installed and I'll get set up for the refill and have the inspection mirror, piece of hose, and the fluid. And then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay? All right, guys. Okay, so we were able to take our bottle, put our bottle here, take our hose, and... Hopefully you can see the hose, if I can get it to stay in focus. The hose is running in. So now all I need to do is manipulate the bottle. It only holds 0.45 of a quart, so I can take my time and run it in there. Let it suck back some air. There we go, farted back some air. Let's see if I can come in this way. Right, you know what? Actually, I could use you guys as my eyes. Let's see here. I can hold you there. And I can squeeze this bullet until you all tell me that you see fluid running out onto the ground. So make sure you yell. What's that? Somebody said move the light? Okay, let me try to move the light. See if I can get a little bit better for you. I don't know, is that better or worse? Did I help you or hurt you? There we go, I think that's pretty good right there, huh? Okay. Give it another chance to suck back a little bit. I'm just leaning on the bottle here. I got a hose stuck on the end of the bottle. So we're just waiting to see a sign of life down here.
Okay, I'm gonna fork back some air if I can. There we go, you heard that. So that at least lets us know we are transferring some fluid into there. Even though it's not running out on the ground yet. But we'll get there. It's gotta be real close here, I would think. back some more air again. Okay. So the nose at the end of the hose is still up. Off the time lapse, let's hope speed it up. sure we're not draining anywhere. Make sure I can see it. No, not yet. We gotta be getting close. The other thing I could do is disconnect the bottle and try to look at it and see how much we show. Oops, yeah, I might as well do that since I dropped the hose. Okay, so we are getting real close to half. You can see right there that we're at oh, uh, probably 18 ounces. So it looks like we got we're gonna get down to about that 16 mark right there. Okay, so I want to. Get the hose back on, and we shouldn't need a whole bunch more here. I'm going to pause this. All right, so we're finished. We got the, uh, the front differential, uh, everything drained, everything refilled, everything's tightened up. So now we're going to go ahead, and uh, Angel here is going to help me get the grill back in. Now, the grill, uh, essentially, it has six screws, right? So you have um, just inside of your factory um your inner headlights, the optional ones on an LE model. And then you have the center bar of the grill. You have these ones. Those are screws. These are screws. And then down here on the frame, there's two more. So you have six. Two, four, six, right? <clears throat> everything else are, uh, the, what I showed you earlier there, everything else is these, um, these little plastic uh, body clips, body pins, whatever you call them, body rivets. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this together. Remember, I have to run the winch wiring back and do all that stuff because we had to disconnect that to get the grill assembly out of the machine. So I'll do some fast forwarding here, but um, also headlights. As you can see, I just unplugged my LEDs. So the headlights, they are, I forget what brand they are, Beam Tech headlights. So I simply unplugged those and left them installed where they were. So take this. Luckily, everything's flexible, so you can just grab everything and bend it around and do whatever you need to do to get everything where you need to be. Except for, I gotta get the wires up a little bit. These winch wires, you got, um, they uh, actually, for doing this job, it might be worth cutting this uh, bar out, this, this bottom bar right here, and run the winch cables so that you can lift this grill out. 
then uh, not have to mess with the winch cabling. Uh, where it is, let's see, this here. Uh, this is your plug for the sensor I was telling you about for the, the worn winch, which I'm not a fan. I wish they would have punched a hole through the steel, and I might do so. I might punch a hole through that steel and slot it with a diagrander big enough for this plug and be able to take this wire straight back and then come up the back side. I, th I, I kind of find this to be dumb uh, the, way they, the way they did this. Warren didn't think about that properly. Just pull these out, put them around there. Set it up top. Now you can just grab a couple of these black plasticky screw things, just throw one in your top right above your headlight here, just to hold everything back in tight where it needs to be. So now, like I said, you're gonna have metal screws here, Phillips, metal Phillips screws here, metal Phillips screws here, winch cabling, it's all through there now. So that's it, that's, uh, uh, you know what, you gotta plug in the um, Beam Tech headlights, that's right. So uh, some of these, well, these two right here have this metal, this silver metal sleeve on here. So what you need to do is before you cinch them down and smash the plastic, you want to grab the plastic, lift it up and onto the sleeve, and then run it in the final amount. So let's see if you can watch what I'm doing. So I'll put it in, trying to get it started, feel it touch. I'll back it off a little bit, and then I'll make sure the plastic's lined up with it so that I'm not cutting the plastic with that. Okay. And let's see here. These ones are, they look kind of like uh, self-tappers, like drill self-drillers right here. You, uh, you can see these ones are a little bit different. This is more, this is a machine screw with that sleeve. And that's going into like a body nut, whereas these are, let's see here. You should be able to see that, I hope. Like these are like the self, uh, self tappers, self drillers, self tappers. Okay, now I am going to omit one screw. I had one that would not budge. I was hitting it with a, an impact screwdriver and that would be this one right here. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna order another one. I'll just go onto a, a Kawasaki online wholesaler. I'll order that. Um, this one came out fine. But yeah, one of the, the self tappers, it was actually this one right here. I couldn't get that thing to budge. Um, I ended up having to semi destroy it to do it. I am using a number three, by the way. On your Phillips screwdrivers, you have uh, number number three, number two, number one, and there's there's even a number four. There's a bigger one, and then you have JIC. You have your uh, your metric Phillips. It looks like a Phillips, but no American Phillips quite fits it right. It's a JIC. So that's a different one. Okay, so here's our winchy wires. We'll get those on. I'll get those later. I'm not worried about that right now. So now what you do is you gather up all the uh, all of these. So I mean, there's there's a lot of these these plastic things here. So you're just going to basically go around now and connect the dots, right? So you're going to you know, take this and. You make sure that you have this rivet out so that this can be compressed. 
You push it in through the hole. Try not to drop too many of them. Now what you can do to, to lock things, there's one right there. There's one right there. There you go. You have one here, you have one here. So make sure that's pulled back enough that you can compress that and then go in and then just push that pin. Okay, so now everything's locking together. You have one right here above your uh, the LED headlight area. Same thing over here. I'm gonna lock that one in later. Oh, got some overlap here, needs adjusted. One. Two. Six. Seven. We got two more. I'm gonna still oh, here's one. I'm gonna push the body out some. Eight. I'm missing one. Let's see if I miss a wheel wheel one here. Oh, I did. I missed the one right here. So here's the final piece of the puzzle. There you go. Front end back together. Everything's done. We can throw the hood on. There you go, front's done. Okay, so if we're doing the rear differential uh, and transmission fluid, this is a shared fluid source, you're gonna need two tools coming up underneath the transmission up through a hole in your skid plate. Uh, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket and ratchet. That's for your drain. For filling on the right hand passenger side here, there's a plug here. You can go to Harbor Freight uh, right now. These are uh, $13.99 for a set of the uh, 3 8 and half inch drive with the big ones that go up to, I think it's uh, 17 millimeter or something. But, anyways, you need a 14 millimeter hex. So that's a half inch, half inch drive ratchet. So with the 14 inch hex, you can come in here. And you can crack that loose with your 17 millimeter. Come straight down underneath. Get on the drain. Get a loosening direction. Crack that bad boy loose. Okay, so this is 2.11 quarts. For the uh, rear axle slash transmission. Now, surprisingly, this fluid is a lot cleaner than the front axle fluid. I'm, I'm actually surprised. I figured this one did most of the work. Um, I'm gonna grab that camera. You can even that the rear is way cleaner than what I got out of the front. The front differential was very gray and dirty, and I showed you the uh, the magnet 
what was going on in the magnet. <laughs> kind of some cool stuff going on there. But uh, yeah, the rear obviously looks better than the front. So yeah, this is your um, 14 millimeter hex. That's your refill. And your drain is right there. And that's just a standard hex head bolt. So you see there's two holes. Let me get back so you can see all the way to the back. Okay, so you see that you have two holes here and here. And then the third hole right here. And that's the one that has your drain to get that 2.11 quartz out of there. Alright, so that's going on. We'll get that fluid out. And uh, get it replaced through there now let's see here let's see if we can show you this okay so we're gonna take our mighty harbor freight tool there we go get that loose okay now inside here is let's see if we can get in here together to see this okay you see that you see that mark that that I'm trying to get it to focus on there okay there so you see that casting mark we want to be fluid level up in that casting mark now they show you that casting mark in your manual and the bottom of that slot that casting slot the bottom of that would be um, the add and then come on camera and then the uh, the top, if you covered that entire slot, that would be overfilled. So you want to do your best to, let's see here, how can we do this? I'm trying to get my... I'm trying to get my light in here in a way that it works oh, without covering you. So right there, that slot, you see? So you want to be between the bottom and the top of that, that U-shaped slot that you see cast into that material. That's going to be what you're looking for at around the 2.11 quart of refill. All right. So we're just about done draining. I'm going to pause the camera and I'll, I'll finish doing my draining. And uh, we'll skip on to the engine. I think you can understand how to how to fill that. What I'll do is I'll get it filled with 2.11 quarts and I'll come back and I'll, um, I'll use this camera and I'll go back, look the back down in the hole and show you what, a, what it looks like when it's full. Okay, but uh, you're simply going to put the plug back in the bottom, fill it, put the plug back on the top, and then you're going to move on to doing your engine oil and filter change. The, uh, the reflection mark there about two-thirds up, so I'm satisfied that I am at the proper fill level on this rear differential slash transmission with the proper fluid sold to me by the Kawasaki dealer at the time I bought the machine, and we're about to... Uh, button this thing up and move to the engine and do the engine oil filter next right. so coming over to your passenger side um, your oil filter looking down on the engine it's on the back side of the engine it's tight it's back there the only way that I could find to get to it was by running a couple long extensions coming through over top of the transmission dropping a clamp down and getting barely a turn on it at a time until I was able to reach in by hand and get it. So I have it cracked loose now, and that's not a problem. So I'm going to go underneath and drain the oil from underneath. All right, so next we're going to go underneath the machine. Um, so we got that filter changed, new filter screwed on. I just put it on by hand. I'm not using tools to put it on. It seemed like it was excessively tight from the factory, but that's kind of standard. Uh, I better grab my light while I'm remembering that it's there. Okay. Trusty Harbor Freight light. Okay, so everything's off there. Turn that thing off. Okay, everything's off. All right, so down here, I believe we need the same 17 millimeter that we used to drain the rear transmission. Okay, so here is your drain bolt on your oil pan. So if you look down the center of the rear of the machine, there's a light stuck there, by the way. Okay, down the center of the rear machine, you see the rear plastic skid plate Phillips bolt. 
and then that is a uh, an engine mount bolt and then come this way and you see the large oval see that large oval that is your drain bolt so what we're gonna do is come up here and let's check the 17 yeah 17 is right so we're gonna jump on here and give her a little cranky crank and left-handed got the oil pan right here under me by the way and let's let the dead dinosaurs run okay and let's see here the oil is nice and clear you can see it draining the oil is not super dirty so at 20 hours the diesel soot hasn't really taken it over completely You see any light through there there right there you can see the light through so you can see that oil is not blacked out if you have ever had a diesel truck you see diesel oil man it's like within a couple hours of starting it up the oil's trashed so there and you can kind of see the golden brown color it's, it's surprisingly clean compared to what I expected right I thought it was gonna be a lot worse so we're draining this, the oil filter's already drained. We're gonna let this drain, and then we're gonna go on top and fill it. And I'll show you that in a minute here, with the 17 millimeters. Okay, so we've got our oil filter changed. We took our 17 millimeter drain bolt out of the bottom through the holding skid plate. Um, a little note for you is that when you do take the sideways mounted oil filter off, um, you are gonna lose very little fluid. What I did is I tucked some rags underneath there and I drained it down and uh, or unscrewed it, I'm sorry, expecting I was gonna drain down the entire contents of the filter, but most of it was out of the filter already, so it must not have an anti-drain back valve, I'm assuming. Um, so anyways, what we're at night, right now, <laughs> This is our uh, our new oil that we're putting in. This was, again, bought from the Kawasaki dealership where I bought the machine. There are two oil fill uh, areas on the Yanmar diesel engine, and that must be due to the fact that they sell the engine off to different people uh, to install into different configurations. So you'll notice this is the one that for Kawasaki, you're going to use this one. Um, there's another one down here, another orange cap down here uh, behind the injectors that I guess in some configurations of, uh, you know, because John Deere uses the Anmore for all their tractors and stuff, so it, it, who knows where you need that one. But regardless, this is the one that we need. So we need 2.2 quarts of the uh, Kawasaki SAE 1040 oil. So you're going to take and install your funnel into there. I already opened this and removed the foil seal. So you're going to use just over half of this gallon. Oops, let me spill a little bit here. I'll try to do this better. There we go. All right, so we're going to put half of this gallon uh, on the engine and on the floor, and the other half hopefully on the inside of the engine. No, I'm just kidding. We'll get some of it in here. Okay, let's see where we're at now. It's about one quart. Turning the bottle sideways is uh, gets rid of that glug 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 thing. Where are we at? We are here's our two quart mark, and we're right above that. So give it a little more. Okay. So at that point. I should be able to see if okay I still hear it glugging down through the uh, cylinder head drains I don't know if you hear that it sounds kind of like a fart still going still going okay 
I don't hear it anymore. So what I'm going to do is you go down, uh, you take this cover off of the side here. There's uh, a plastic buckle on the bottom and a steel buckle on the, the front side. You take that off and that's where your battery is. That's where your air box is. I already took that apart, inspected the air filter. It looks like new. Um, uh, back in here, right there is your dipstick. So your dipstick is right below this fan. You see a tube coming through this plastic container where your air filter and everything is. That's your dipstick for your engine oil. So what you're going to do is go down here. You're going to pull this dipstick. You're going to wipe her down, clean her up. Okay. So once you've done that, you can see the hash marks here, hopefully. So that's your full versus add marks. So what we're looking for is to find our fluid at the high side of the hash marks because we have not started this engine yet. Okay, we are not quite there. Let's see if you can, if you guys can see that, but we're at about the halfway point on the hash marks right now. Okay, so we're gonna give it another splash here. Give her another splash and then we'll uh, let that run down. So it's a shame that you just don't quite get enough to do too with uh, you know, 2.2 point, uh, 2 .2 quarts. And they sell it as a gallon. I wish they sold it as five quarts. You'd have enough to get two oil changes out of it. Okay, so we're letting that run down a couple seconds here. Let's see if I got my dipstick reading up to the top now. There we go. Now we are right at the top. Hopefully one of the angles here you can see that so we're right at the top of the hash marks right so we're right at the full mark so at that point we should be able to start it up and we'll push a little bit up there into that filter and as a matter of fact I'm gonna give it a little just a little baby glug there you go compensate for what we're gonna push up into the filter and keep it on the high side of that. Now let's go like this. Okay. Get rid of that. No dirt, no dust, nothing that looks foreign. All right, so there you go. We've now refilled that oil. And we've done front differential, we've done rear differential in the transmission, we've done the engine oil on the filter. Uh, so this thing's ready to go now. I believe, I'd have to go look at the book again, I believe after the 20 hour that we were good out to either 100 or 200, I can't remember. I know my Kubota every 200 hours is when you do your services. Um, I, I hope this is 200 hours, but um, yeah, we'll see. Um, anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope I helped you out. So uh, if you remember, you need that 8-millimeter Allen wrench for the front diff. You need a 17-millimeter socket, and you need a 14-millimeter hex for the rear diff slash transmission. You need a 17-millimeter socket, short extension, to do your drain on your oil pan of your engine. Um, you are going to have a bitch of a time getting the oil filter out, especially the first time. They're always tight from the factory. Oftentimes they're put on and then the engine's painted. Um, so you're also trying to break that paint seal. Um, I had to use a uh, compression style cam over filter wrench with a bunch of long extensions come in from over top of the rear transmission. Um, you're going to have to fight your way through that. Now that I've hand tightened it, I expect that I don't have quite as much problem uh, I'm trying to do this in the future so uh, there you go we got all the fluids all the vitals are changed uh, my radiator fluid uh, because of the heater system when I brought it home um, I did inspect that the level and I found what looked like a uh, gelatin type of residue around the neck 
Um, so I went, ran back to a different Kawasaki dealer and I bought enough fluid to do two changes because I was afraid there was contamination in the fluid. So what I did is I, uh, they installed the Kurt Industries heater, they put it back together, they filled it up. I looked at it, I noticed that the bottle was A, empty, and B, had gelatin around the top. I took pictures, I sent that to the Kawasaki dealer. Um, I then drained that fluid, refilled it with new Kawasaki fluid, ran it for a half hour, drained that fluid, refilled it with Kawasaki fluid. So this uh, radiator fluid is, uh, this is the fourth fill of radiator fluid in 20 hours on this machine. So I think we're pretty good up there. I'm not even gonna think about draining that again. Um, the only, the next major service, uh, we're going to probably take it to the dealer and have them take the transmission apart. There's, uh, some piece inside the transmission that is supposed to be greased or lubricated. And, uh, I may do that. I might look into that a little bit more. I might do that. I might not. I'm not, I haven't decided yet. Um, valves, I'm probably going to pull the valve cover and do the valve lash check. Cause that's pretty simple stuff there. Um, maybe I'll do a video of that too. All right. Hey, thank you guys. Do me a favor and like and subscribe if you appreciate the kind of stuff that I show you. And, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't claim to be an expert or a professional at much, but uh, I'm pretty handy at most things and I fight my way through everything. So, all right, like and subscribe. I appreciate it.